Hey again. So um, I would like to do a quick intro into Helix Market. So I realize this is the last talk before the beers. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, so yeah, uh, Helix Markets was basically trying to solve the problem with um, the fragmentalization of liquidity across different chains. So we saw that like, you know, uh, a lot of the blockchain protocols in crypto are like Legos. So, you know, you have a lot of different bricks. Now, the unfortunate thing about all these bricks is that none of them fit together. So it's like playing Lego, but you can't build a house, right? Um, and that has led to many negative effects uh, in crypto. So we have like this multi-chain maze of over 300 blockchains. Every blockchain competes for the same liquidity, super fragmentalized. Um, then you have different latency issues. Um, yeah, and, and it's just like stopping DeFi from really taking off. It's, it's keeping it in a place where it's pretty much stuck, where it's been, you know, there's been no real breakthrough for the last three to four years. So, and the result of this was, um, if you look at a comparison of liquidity on decentralized exchanges versus centralized exchanges, you can see that all the decentralized exchanges on all chains combined barely scrape about 10% of monthly volume that centralized exchanges generate. Now, why is that, right? So centralized exchanges usually don't have much friction. You sign up with whatever method it is, you know, you can start trading. It's very frictionless, easy to use. With, you know, decentralized exchanges, you have to have at least, you know, four or five browser wallets. You need to figure out, you know, how to configure your wallet. Some wallets work with different ecosystems, some don't. But, like, there's a lot of friction and it's all this contract signings, approvals that you need to do all the time. It's just a bad experience compared to centralized exchanges. Um, the other key point, I guess, is high liquidity, right? So on, on centralized exchanges, you know, you never worry about if your execution will have liquidity. Usually on, on the big exchanges, there's enough of liquidity for, you know, any trade that you do, $100, $1,000, $10,000, even $100,000 on most pairs, you will be able to swallow. If you go to a DEX, you know, and do a $100,000 trade, um, in most cases, you'll have slippage above like 10 to 20 percent, you know, in some cases, even 80 percent, depending on the pair. So that's not really like uh, a good user experience if you lose 80 percent of your funds because there is such high slippage on, on the DEX you're trading. Um, and the third thing is uh, one thing that centralized exchanges were really good at was thinking about advanced trading features that users can um, can run. So be it like trading bots, be it grid bots, be it a lot of, you know, things that they can use where um, a centralized ex or decentralized exchange kind of has a hard time following. But bottom line is, you know, decentralized exchanges really have better tech than centralized exchanges, but at the end of the day, what the user wants is ease of use and liquidity. So our thinking was, basically when we were building Helix, how can we give um, our users the experience that, you know, they can get on a centralized exchange, so meaning like nice, easy, Trading, uh, good UI, mobile version, um, being non-custodial, um, and just making the experience similar to a centralized exchange, but keeping all the benefits of decentralization. Um, and we found this uh, kind of two solutions within Chain Fusion that enabled us to do this. Um, one thing was chain key technology, and the other was um, threshold signatures. So just to briefly explain um, how this works. So usually a uh, centralized exchange or a DEX, they will give you like a seed phrase. A centralized, ex centralized exchange will not even give you a seed phrase. They'll have their own wallet set up for you. So you don't control your funds. The centralized exchange controls your funds. You're just sort of like, you know, using their infrastructure. With decentralized exchanges, you get your key and everything, but you need to keep your seed phrase. You need to make sure you don't lose it. Now, what ChainKey enabled, and this is like a really cool solution that, that runs on, on ICP, is that you can use the protocol as a security layer for private key keeping. And you can think about it in a way that um, the private key is like a puzzle, right? And only the nodes of the network can solve this puzzle whenever a smart contract calls it. So this creates like a really nice way of how you can do custody for users 
where not you as the kind of the contract that runs the exchange, nor the user itself does have to do any private key handling. The private key is being handled all the time by the chain. Um, and the second innovation, which is really cool, are the threshold signatures. Now, we talked a lot before about um, different blockchain standards, different protocols, etc. So all these chains, they're really bad at talking to each other. But the one thing that they do have in common is cryptography. So that means, you know, most of the blockchains out there today use either ECDSA or Schnorr signatures to basically create all the transactions or sign the transactions and to manage the private keys. So what we're able to do is basically for every transaction, we can sign it via the protocol and then propagate it to each different network. And now as long as the network supports either ECDSA or Schnorr, Schnorr signatures, we can integrate that network. Now that means it gives us pretty much infinite possibilities to integrate any protocol in existence onto the Helix markets and execute all the transactions natively. So like if we integrate Bitcoin, there is no bridge between Bitcoin and Helix. Every Bitcoin transaction will be a Bitcoin transaction. You also get a Bitcoin wallet. You get an Ethereum wallet, you have an ICP wallet, you get a Cardano wallet, you get a Solana wallet. So there is absolutely no difference between, you know, a native transaction on Solana, but it, the only thing is it's being executed by a smart contract on the ICP. And the smart contract on ICP can talk to Solana, can talk to Bitcoin, can talk to any network. Now this is like really the, the big breakthrough in chain fusion of how you can do native chain integrations of any protocol in existence and utilize the liquidity where it's, you know, where it is, so on the native chain. Now, this is basically our, sort of the architecture that we have. So, as mentioned, we are using um, Threshold ECDSA, um, in the future also Schnorr, identity management on the ICP. We have the blockchain protocols that we integrate through uh, basically our backend which means our smart contracts have address creation, uh, signing and sending of transactions, and identity management. And the basically very infrastructure heavy part is then the services. So that means all the node infrastructure, the RPCs, um, all that uh, handling of chain communication is then kind of done via that. And that's basically the uh, Helix exchange, which supports native multi-chain trading via an order book. Um, yeah, that's it, everyone.